How many alien civilizations are out there, do you think? Well, the universe is very big, so some. But not as many as most people would like to think, is my view, because the idea that that there is a trajectory going from simple simple cellular life like bacteria all the way through to humans it seems to me there's some big gaps along that way that the the eukaryotic cell the, the the complex cell that we have is is the biggest of them but also photosynthesis is another the other another interesting gap is a long gap from from the origin of the eukaryotic cell to the first animals that was about a billion years uh maybe more than that um a long delay in when oxygen began to accumulate in the atmosphere. So from the first appearance of oxygen in the great oxidation event to a, a enough for animals to respire, it was close to 2 billion years. Um, why so long? It seems to be planetary factors. It seems to be geology as much as in anything else. And we don't really know what was going on. So the idea that there's a, a kind of an inevitable march towards uh, complexity and and and, and um, sentient life i don't think he's right doesn't not to say it's not going to happen but i think it's not going to happen often so if you think of earth given the uh, geological constraints and all that kind of stuff do you have a sense that life complex life intelligent life happened really quickly on earth or really long so just just to get a sense of are you more sort of saying that it's very unlikely to get the kind of conditions required to create humans? Or is it, even if you have the condition, it's just statistically difficult? I think the, I mean, the problem, the, the single great problem at the center of all of that, to my mind, is the origin of the eukaryotic cell, which happened once and without eukaryotes, nothing else would have happened. And, and that really? is something that... That's because you're saying it's super important, the eukaryotes. But I, I'm saying a tantamount to saying that it is impossible to build something as complex as a human being from bacterial cells. Totally agree in some deep fundamental way. But it's just like a one cell going inside another. It's, is that yeah. so difficult to get to work right? That like, Well, again, it happened once. Um, and if you think about... If you, if you think... I mean, I'm in I'm in a minority view in this position. Most biologists probably wouldn't agree with me anyway. But if you think about the the starting point, we've we've got a simple cell. It's an archaeal cell. We can be fairly sure about that. So it looks a lot like a bacterium, uh, but is in fact from this other other domain of life. So it looks a lot like a bacterial cell. That means it doesn't have anything. It doesn't have a nucleus. It doesn't really have complex endomembrane. It has it has a little bit of stuff, but not 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 that much. And it, it takes up an endosymbiont. So what happens next? And the answer is basically everything to do with complexity. To me, there's a, there's a beautiful paradox here. Um, plants and animals and fungi all have exactly the same type of cell. But they all have really different ways of living. So a plant cell is photosynthetic. They started out as algae in the oceans and so on. So think of algal blooms, single cell things. You know, the, 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 basic, uh, the, the basic cell structure that it's built from is exactly the same with a couple of small differences. It's got chloroplasts as well. It's got a vacuole. It's got a cell wall. But that's about it. Pretty much everything else is exactly the same in a plant cell and an animal cell. And yet the, the ways of life are completely different. So this, these this cell structure did not evolve in response to different ways of life, different environments. I'm in the ocean doing photosynthesis. I'm on land running around as part of an animal. Uh, I'm a fungus in a soil, uh, spending out long kind of shoots into whatever it may be, mycelium. So they all have the same underlying cell structure. Why? Almost certainly it was driven by adaptation to the internal environment to having these pesky endosymbionts that, that forced all kinds of change on, on the host cell. Now, in one way, you could see that as a really good thing because it may be that there's some inevitability to this process that as soon as you've got endosymbionts, you're more or less bound to go in that direction. Or it could be that there's a huge fluke about it and it's almost certain to go wrong in just about every case possible, that the conflict will lead to effectively war, leading to death and extinction. Uh, and it, it simply doesn't work out. So maybe it happened millions of times and it went wrong every time, or maybe it only happened once and, and it worked out because it was inevitable. And actually, we simply do not know enough now to say which of those two possibilities is true, but both of them are a bit grim. But your 
you're leaning towards we just got really lucky in that one leap. Like we got, so do you have a sense that our galaxy, for example, has just maybe millions of planets with bacteria living on it? I would expect billions, tens of billions of planets with bacteria living on it, practically. I would, I would, I mean, there's probably and, what, five to 10 planets per star, of which I would hope that at least one would have bacteria on. Mm -hmm. um, so I expect bacteria to be very common. Uh, I, I simply can't put a number otherwise. I mean, I expect it will happen elsewhere. It's not that I think we're living in a completely empty universe. That's so fascinating. But, but I think that it's not going to happen inevitably. And there's something, you know, it wasn't, that's not the only problem with, uh, with, with, with complex life on Earth. I mentioned oxygen and animals and so on as well. And even humans, we came along very late. You go back 5 million years and, you know, would we be that impressed if we came across a planet full of giraffes? I mean, you'd think, hey, there's life here. There's a nice planet to colonize or something. We, we wouldn't think, oh, let's try and have a conversation with this giraffe. Yeah, I'm not sure what exactly we would think. I'm not exactly sure what makes humans so interesting from an alien perspective or how they would notice. I'll talk to you about cities too, because that's an interesting perspective of uh, how to look at human civilization. But your sense, I mean, of course you don't know, but it's an interesting world. It's an interesting galaxy. It's an interesting universe to live in that's just like every sun, like 90% of uh, solar systems have bacteria in it. Like imagine that world. And the galaxy maybe has just a handful, if not one, intelligent civilization. That's a wild world. It's a wild world. I didn't even, world. even think about that world. There's a kind of thought that, like one of the reasons it would be so exciting to find life on Mars or Titan or whatever, is like, if it's life is elsewhere, then surely, statistically, that life, no matter how unlikely you carry as multicell organisms, sex, uh, violence, what what else is extremely difficult? I mean, uh, photosynthesis, is figuring out yeah. some machinery that involves the chemistry and the environment to allow the building up of complex organisms, surely that would arise. But man, I don't know how I would feel about just bacteria everywhere. Well, it would be depressing if it was true. I suppose depressing. Always I don't think- I don't know what's more depressing, bacteria everywhere, nothing everywhere. Yes, either of them are chilling. Yeah. But whether it's chilling or not, I don't think should f force us to change our view about whether it's real or not. Uh, yes, and what I'm saying may or may not be true. So how would you feel if we discovered life on Mars? I'd so be you, nice, it sounds I like you'd be less excited than some others um, because you're like, well, what I would be most interested in is how similar to life on Earth it would be. It would actually turn into quite a subtle problem because the the likelihood of life having gone to and fro between between Mars and the Earth is oh, right. is, is quite I wouldn't say high, but it's not low. It's it's quite feasible. Uh, and so, if we found life on Mars and it had very similar genetic code, but it was slightly different. Most people would interpret that immediately as evidence that there'd been transit one way or the other, and that it was a it was a common origin of life on Mars or on the Earth, and it went one way or the other way. Yeah. The other way to see that question, though, would be to say, well, actually, the whole, the whole beginnings of life lie in deterministic chemistry and thermodynamics, starting with the most likely abundant materials, CO two and water, and, and, a, and a wet, rocky planet, and Mars was wet and rocky at the beginning. Uh, and will, I won't say inevitably, but potentially almost inevitably come up with a genetic code, which is not very far away from the genetic code that we already have. So we see subtle differences in the genetic code. What does it mean? It could be very difficult to interpret. Is it possible, do you think, to tell the difference of something that truly originated? Uh, I think if the stereochemistry was different, we have sugars, for example, that are the L form or the D form, and, and, and um, we have... Uh, D sugars and L amino acids right across all of life, but lipids. Uh, we have the bacteria have one one stereoisomer, and and the bacteria have the other, the opposite stereoisomer. So it's perfectly possible to use one or the other one, uh, and the same would almost certainly go for. And I think George Church in uh, has been trying to 
make life based on the opposite stereoisomer. Um, so it's perfectly possible to do, and it will work. Um, and if we were to find life on Mars that was using the opposite stereoisomer, that would be unequivocal evidence that uh, life had started in independently there. So hopefully the life we find will be on Titan and Europa or something like that, where it's less likely that we shared and it's harsher conditions. So there's going to be weirder kind of life. I wouldn't count on that because water. life started in deep sea hydrothermal vents. It's a here. harsh condition. That's pretty harsh, yeah. Uh, so Titan is different. Europa is probably quite similar to Earth in the yeah. sense that we're dealing with an ocean. It's an acidic ocean there, um, as the early Earth would have been. And it almost certainly has hydrothermal systems. Same with Enceladus. We can tell that from these plumes coming from the, the surface through the ice. We know there's a liquid ocean, and we, we, we can tell roughly what the chemistry is. For Titan, we're dealing with liquid methane and things like that. So that would really, if there really is life there, it would really have to be very, very different to anything uh, that we know on Earth.